So we've decided to celebrate the six month mark to do a best bits segment. The show format's gone stale and Lord Sugar has really had his day. Safe to say from the very short window of watching that, Lord Sugar's gone soft and I'm bored shitless. <laughs> no arms. Right, he's fired. <laughs> These intros compared to JV's intro. JV bopped in. In this episode of Unfinished Business, I'm gonna do a little Apprentice episode review for you guys, just to give you my thoughts on the candidates this year. My PR agent got me a nice article in the Sunday Express, and the headline is, it's time for Lord Sugar to be fired. Now that might seem quite savage, but in reality, Lord Sugar's always firing people, so he's gotta go out the same way that he came in. But in the article, I say that Lord Sugar's passed his sell-by date. The UK is absolutely fucked. And what we need to do is really turn the perception of our entrepreneurs around because we have got some of the greatest entrepreneurs in the world here in England. If the new Apprentice series is anything to go by, entrepreneurship is dead in the UK. It's Saturday morning and I've come to sit here to review an episode for you guys to tell you my real thoughts on what's going on in this boardroom. This is the worst season of candidate talent Ever. Let's fast forward to the boardroom and see what's going on. Fighting it out for his funding. 18 ambitious entrepreneurs. Vadi Mazzaro is in the house. DJ, host, MC. The other candidates are just extras on my journey to the top. Look at these intros here. These intros compared to JV's intro. JV bopped in in a M3 convertible. They called me up, they said, what sort of entrance do you want to do? And I said, right, watch this. JV's going to rock up and he's going to bop in in his M3 convertible cruising around London. Beauty, <laughs> brains, body and business. Is that what you're saying? Four Bs, yes, sir. No, it should be five Bs, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, this is painful watching this. I'm about three minutes into this episode and it's really painful to watch. Even this bit when he's just rapping it. This used to be intense. You're not going to be the next project manager because I think you are a lost cause in this process. He used to have that snap, that edge, that sharpness that had the fear. Maybe it's age, he's just a soft old man now. Ollie, I'm sorry to say, mate. Ollie, I'm sorry to say, mate. When has Lord Sugar ever called anyone mate? He really has gone soft. Mate, I've never heard in 18 years Lord Sugar call anyone mate. What has happened to you, Lord Sugar? Goodbye, Ollie. Ollie got smoked. Well, safe to say from the very short window of um, watching that series, Lord Sugar's gone soft and I'm bored shitless. It's time for him to step down. I'm putting my hat in the ring. It's time to bring JV into center stage and put me on there. And I will put these candidates to the test for sure. Leadership is not about blaming others. Leadership is about taking responsibility for the failure of your team. If you are a good project manager, your job is to manage the people and understand their skill sets and put them into the areas so they can succeed, so collectively as a team you can win. So I wanted to do something special for you guys that have followed Unfinished Business, maybe since the very beginning, or maybe you're new to the channel. The show is designed to inspire entrepreneurs, to show them the reality, the behind the scenes of growing and scaling a company and showing you the real side of Joseph Valente. This is access all areas, there's nothing hidden. Over the last six months, we've taken the business from 200,000 pounds a month to currently 750,000 pounds a month with the aim in March to hit that seven figure sales month, one million in revenue. And as this business is only three years old, I see that as a great achievement, an incredible achievement that me and my team have been able to pull off. Unfinished Business is about having fun. It's about being real. It's about education, inspiration, motivation, but also entertainment. So we've decided to celebrate the sixth month 
mark. We've been doing this show now for six months to do a best bits segment. I've not watched back any of the content. I usually watch it each week when it goes out, but I haven't watched it back like this. So it's gonna be nice to bring back some memories for me. So without further ado, let's get stuck into watching scene number one. You think you're doing a good job? I don't. If I say do four hours, you gotta do four hours. Not you're gonna do three hours and 20 minutes and off for lunch and do something else. Stay and do the job or you ain't gonna remain here. Some people say this is the wrong style. In my opinion, it's absolutely the right approach. I hear all of the opinions of the negative people saying that it's micromanagement and you can't talk to people like that. I've built two eight figure businesses in the last 10 years and probably most of those guys haven't. Unfortunately, in direct sales, this is what it takes. There's no nicey nicey and if you are, you just get walked all over. So how many have you done? One, Day two. two. Um, Cut that out. <laughs> I nearly bought his bullshit. He got his fucking violin out from the bag that he's brought with him and goes, oh, I've done 40 calls. Do, 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 do. Right, pray. <sighs> 500,000, 500,000, Right, we need to sacrifice a virgin. Will, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> morning, morning, morning! Let's roll! I've built large businesses before, but I'm looking now to actually build large businesses and make lots of money at the same time. It's a fantastic investment, and uh, the, the systems and processes, what I've learned today, is already gold. So. There was a guy that came in on the same time as Paul in August 2020. He didn't sign up, and he came back 14 months later. And then, guess who was doing the presentation when he showed up? Paul! <laughs> Honestly, no joke, he was gutted. Back in September, I was still running events. I was going to events and delivering events. Now, in the first quarter of 2024, we've done just over 2.5 million in revenue, and I haven't attended one Discovery Day. So, I've dropped you a little tip on there to say good luck with your wedding, yeah? You've pressed 100 pressure. No, I know I have. No, you can't. I can, it's for your wedding, good luck. That's so kind. No worries. Thank you. No worries, you have a nice day. And he's got one of these things that I like to call VIP parking tickets. They are a park wherever you want and pay a premium for it. They're brilliant, aren't they? I absolutely love them. I mean, how much is this one? 55, what a bargain. Central London parking, right outside the venue. 55 pound all day long. I'd say that's good value for money, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd give it that. Absolutely. I love these VIP parking tickets. And do you know what I do? I take them off nicely. I keep it in the glove box. And then when I park there again, I stick it straight back on the window because 90% of traffic wardens will not check the date of the ticket and then you won't get another one. Yeah, so you can recycle that motherfucker 10 times before you pay for it. So only works out five pound a ticket, which is gonna be cheaper than actually going to a paying display or a pay by phone and parking there. So that is the millionaire mastermind tip of the day. So this scene is probably one of the most viral pieces of content I have ever made. And this video's done millions and millions of views and it's still banging on TikTok, on YouTube shorts. And um, it was a fun, fun piece of content. There may be passenger parachute any workplace incident you had. Maybe car, bike accident, can you please tell me? Yeah, I fell over at work. This year, any incident you had? Christmas party. You're doing 25K a year. I think you need to spend all your time on training. Go, your turn. Just a quick call to make sure you're still attending on Friday. Um, for the book. No, um, right, he's fired. <laughs> So those two gentlemen there, Jay and Ashton, they're two of our top guys. I give those guys tough love. I respect them greatly. I think they're great guys and I have trained them. I put them through their paces and I'm hard because I want to see whether you crumble, okay, or you can hack it because effectively, Business is tough, and if you can't handle the pace, you're gonna get chewed up and spat out. So I apply pressure on purpose to see how far people can go. And these two have done very, very well. If that don't get 10 responses, I'll quit my job today. Do you think a man like me makes his own coffee, my dear? Do you, my? 
Fucking bridesmaid or something. Happy birthday, dear Joseph. Oh, just <laughs> you. You've been you've been shopping at the Smiths again. I told her I'm too old for Power Rangers. So again, I'm not wearing a sash. What possessed you to buy me a sash? Message your children, your family. You won't be leaving this building for the next 18 days. Let everybody know. I hope you brought a fucking toothbrush with you because you're going nowhere. <laughs> Oh, uh, do you know what? I love Marvina so much. Look at her face. <laughs> there it is. What a shot. <laughs> Freeze that shot and then let it spin to the smile and leave this bit in the edit as well so um, she knows that I've done it on purpose. <laughs> Look at that smile. Look, they're both relieved. Jay doesn't know me that well at the moment, so he's not how, he doesn't know whether I'm messing or not at this stage. Say hello. Hello. No, it's softer. Hello. <laughs> You're too aggressive. You got to slow it down. It took Tony a while to come down off the aggressive tree. Aggressive doesn't work in sales. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I love Jay. He's a great guy. And I kind of sat down with him. I just said, he said the same thing that he still needs to talk to his missus. And I said, have you not spoke to her for six months? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is Patrick, and it's time for him to get off the tools. <laughs> uh, you know what, right? It takes me moments like this to sit back and actually watch myself to realize how fucking crazy I actually am sometimes. And you know what? How much of a great bunch of people I've got that they, you know, just roll with it. I tell you what I do want is a steam room area and a shower. No, I want it at the office because I fucking want it in the office. If I'm here, I want a steamer. I like it at the fucking office. It's good for everybody. Chris has heard everything. Yeah, he's like the silent wife that's had to live with me for 15 years and just puts up with it. <laughs> but he knows it's good for him. So everybody in the department, you're making them pick a superhero name, including you two guys now, yeah? Professor Hulk. So everybody's going in the leaderboard. Professor Hulk, that's a good one, isn't it? Professor Hulk? Is it Professor Hulk? What's Professor Hulk? There you go, so Professor Hulk. Cool. That's not his name. Because he's got glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean he's called the Hulk. Here comes Ant Man. <laughs> <laughs> what a great message to take to the market for all of our internal roles is a free childcare option. What about people that don't have children but have got pets? Well, pets. Yeah, dog, don't need to put dogs in the daycare. For what, the day? <laughs> I'm talking about childcare. She's like, well, I ain't got a child, but I like dogs. Okay, <laughs> so can I have dog care? I'm like, it took me a moment to just actually register. What did you just say? <laughs> so basically, I bought these plaques for our customers that qualified our trade coach program. And um, I think they look great. And I bought one for Chris as well, because I'm a really nice business partner. It's been in my office now for about a month and a half and I forgot that I bought it. So I need to clear this office out and get tidy in here. So I'm going to give it to him now. Chris, would you like to get up and come and collect your uh, present? <laughs> You're going to like it. There you go, mate. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> uh, he's so ungrateful. I think of him, I buy him a fucking present, and look, he's, he's got nothing to say. Look at his face, look. <laughs> you made a sale. Let's go. <laughs> well done, Tony. <laughs> kill, that's how you kill Joe. Oh. Make a sale. Oh, I need to sit down. <laughs> I actually bust my foot and my heart at the same time then. Ah. I've got another one pending in five minutes as well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> It's too much! <laughs> You're only as good as your last sale. The bowl of eggs. Looks like some dry, yeah, horrible rubber. Looks like some bad Christmas confetti or something. Go this in. needs binning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And washing. Properly washing. If you want a dog job doing properly, do it yourself. I'm surprised how bad Sadie's eggs are, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
You should have seen the bowl that you came with the other day. I've never seen anything like it. Honestly. Just go and do me some fresh eggs. No, I've left mine in there for fucking half an hour. They're going to be ruined now. They're half cooked. The bowl needs a proper wash up, yeah? Joseph, I love you, son. If there's anything wrong with these eggs. <coughs> yeah! <laughs> 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 They poisoned me! Oh no! Thank <laughs> Finally she got me after months and weeks and weeks and weeks of publicly dissing her eggs. <laughs> Look at Malvina. She was waiting for that <laughs> to come up as she is. But you know, one other thing to note here is just look at the office. I mean, this is when we just had two offices upstairs and the transition now, I mean, we've got an extra 10,000 square feet, training centers, boardrooms, podcast studios. This has all been done in like a matter of months. About social media, that's why you have like social media managers, head of social media, like it is a full time, just that job. Yeah. I wonder where I could get one of those from, Chloe. <laughs> I've not done the rest yet. <laughs> what have you been doing for the last six weeks? <laughs> I did try and run through the wall at King's Cross, but it didn't help me out. It explains a lot. Busy day today. I've brought my coffee boy with me, and um, he's just gone and got me my coffees. Do you know how to use LinkedIn Recruiter? Show me system I don't know yet. <laughs> oh, he's taken over you, Malvina. <laughs> Anyway, Jake, where are you on this mate? I'm fourth. I mean, I'd pipe down if I were you. <laughs> are you meant to be going on holiday tomorrow, aren't you? I'd fucking cancel that. Why would you go on holiday now? Just save the holiday for the new year. It's fucking four weeks before Christmas. Are you stupid. Where Joe doesn't like giving holidays. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely fucking right. If I could, there'd be zero holidays in my organisation. Did you want me to make you some eggs? <laughs> nice guys finish last. Nice guys finish last. <laughs> My management style is lay it down the line. It's a bit more of a dictatorship than it is a, um, a diplomacy. I did a podcast going out on Trade Mastermind every week now, without fail. Yeah. Uh, with Mastermind. No, I'm talking about Trade Mastermind. Okay, so there's Millionaire Mastermind. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Trade Mastermind. I don't know what she's going on about. <laughs> right, just mute her, Chris. Yeah? <laughs> just mute it. That is doing my head in. Are you doing that with your head? I can hear you rubbing your trousers together really loud. Typical woman, you fucking rubbing your trousers legs together too loud. You can't fucking do anything right, can you? Breathe too loud. If you smile, it's a problem usually in most cases. You're not wrong. What are you smiling at? I'm just happy. Why do you mean you're fucking happy? I'll soon change that. We'll soon fix that. <laughs> How can you rub your trousers together too loud? How can she hear that? She told me she was Miss Hong Kong and I said, I'm Mr. Malente. Get out of my fucking way, bitch. <laughs> that was, um... That was referring to this challenge that they made us do on The Apprentice to get on the show. They said, right, line yourselves up by best looking first, from best looking to worst looking. Everyone's looking around like, what the hell? And I'm just like, ah, boom, straight to number one spot. And the only person that had the audacity to come up there with me was a uh, lady who said she was Mrs. Hong Kong from like 2007 or something. And I was like, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm Joseph Valente, get out my way. And I pushed her back into second place. Right, everybody, I've got some good news. I just found out we've done eight sales today. Today. It's a record breaker, let's go! It's a record breaking sales day. This was where the team was growing quite significantly. I think this was around end of October, early November from memory. For context for you guys, is eight times 15,000, which is 120,000 pounds in a day. So we were really, really pleased with that. Now we just do that every event as a standard, but back then, it was the um, ceiling that we just um, broke through, so we were really pleased. What's really important for me now, as we move into this week, is I really want to carve out a fantastic culture here. I want to make it really exciting to come to work. <laughs> 
You know, Tamara's worked with me for years and years and years. Well, I think I'm right. Tamara thinks she's right. But we have a great relationship. We do work well together, even though sometimes it gets very fiery. And she's a fantastic asset um, to our business and has got an incredible skill set. Um, you know, we're very lucky to have her in the organization. Who's, we got another bacon. You hold your horses, mate. Were you just wowing at me then, were you? What, were you about to wow at me for giving away that bacon sandwich? No, I haven't. I've given you the full English. You wanted the full English. I'm giving you the top dog stuff. He's taken down the wrong fucking wall. How does it feel to be the big 5-0? <laughs> I know, I will take that. You ever wake up in the morning, you're just like, fuck everyone. Moving forward, all new starters here. Yeah? Let's please keep them out of the business until they've been onboarded. I don't know why you got involved and brought her up here in the first place. I'm not too sure why. If I find out you haven't done it, I'll fire you on the spot. That's going to happen immediately, without fucking fail. Who's 100% closer? Come on, man. Come on, you were smashing it the other day. You nearly did 10. You got to show these boys how it was, how it's going down. You said to me the other day that Tony's a one trick pony and that he can only get it one day, but he can't do it every day. Is that right? If, if I was allowed to, I would have backhanded you just then by saying how you fucking do it. It's shame. <laughs> <laughs> if that ever happens once, you know it me straight away. All CVs come to me. Now, moving forward, nobody else asks for the CVs, nobody else gets involved in the CVs. The only roles that come out just put them to me, because ultimately I'll be making the decision anyway. Then do the... Um... Ten bookings a day. That's minimum standard now, every it's single what I day. Do. Boom! That's how we do it. Back to fucking winning ways. Unfinished fucking business. Nothing like it. Soon to be a mainstream TV show. Say hello. hello. Say hello everyone on unfinished business. You have to get in the back because I've got to drive. If I catch anybody in my office when I'm not there, I will fire them on the spot. It's gross misconduct immediately. If there's one thing I'm learning from watching this unfinished business, I use the phrase, I'll fire them on the spot quite a lot. And maybe I should tone that down a little bit, or maybe I should tone it up. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments, should I tone it up or should I tone it down? Sadie, uh, I just want to give you your Christmas bonus. <laughs> Actually, I'd rather have a different colour, please. Oh, yeah. He's not a new motivational speaker for Monday! <laughs> I'm like the CIA. Everyone that comes in here, your minds are bugged. How's it going, Tony? <laughs> Hello, mate. Whoa! Wow, look at this everywhere. Oh my gosh. The first event suite is nearly complete, and the team have done a fantastic job. Very, very happy, very excited. So we're in the event space now and the final TV is going up. We are almost done. <laughs> Shit. You're not telling him where the leads are. You're not taking your initiative to go, fuck me, they're generating competition leads. I better do my part and make sure that actually the people that I'm in charge of are doing the job. I'm gonna wipe that fucking smile off your face in a minute. I've got you some flowers. You. Perfume. You didn't have to, but thank you. Yes, I did have to, yeah. <laughs> Look how, look how, look how itchy everyone looks, look. They heard me coming upstairs, now they're all readjusted. Everyone's pretending to be busy, look. <laughs> when you get to the top, you get a screen on your desk, it doesn't work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> When I was teaching companies how to get the sales results that we're selling, I mean, Sadler's doing 400 grand. That's a five million pound business. He was doing 190 grand a year only 18 months ago, wasn't he? Even Gavin Matthews, one man band, 70 grand a year. He sold five products this month. That's 75 grand he's done this month. Kevin Jones has done 80 grand. He's like, thank you so much, not just from me, but from my family as well. Chris Sadler is one of our top clients. I mean, he's done an incredible job. One of our most successful mentees. I absolutely enjoy talking to him, spending time with him. I think he's an incredible guy. I'm so proud of what he's done. Every time I talk to him, 
he's just willing to evolve as an individual and he just goes for it. And I respect that so much. Javin, incredible job. Came in as a one-man band and he's grown his solar business. Incredible character. Again, out of his comfort zone, just took on the training, learned the blueprint and done great things. I have a lot of time with Gavin and I look forward to spending more time with him. Now this guy, he smashed it. Kevin came to us when he was subcontracting for a few hundred pounds a day and um, now he's doing 8,000 pounds a month and this is in 12 months and these guys really are the success of Trade Mastermind. Pleased to announce Ethan from Alpha Electrics as our January competition winner! Woo! Yeah. Right, well, he's got it done. Oh, oh, hell. Hell. Oh, no. Jesus Christ! You've done really, really well up until now. <laughs> but you can do better. You always doubt me. I'm not doubting you. I just I like to know the detail. I know what you salespeople are like. It's like Tony's commission report. What's that? Is you've got to check it. <laughs> <laughs> what have I told you about blaming the leads? It's uh, making excuses. Exactly, so don't fucking do it. One million dollars! Let's roll, baby. The best ever day yesterday in Trade Mastermind history in the bookings team. They've gone up call rates by 300% every agent, every single day. Is this because we beat them all up? Like? Absolutely. It needs to be run military. Just so you're all crystal clear, if this thing stops here, everybody else's job is finished if we have another month where you send 10 people to an event. This is just a few weeks ago. And I went upstairs and I'd been semi-retired for two months and I left the business in the hands of some people and the business was rocking but the performance had significantly dropped. Without me there pushing the standards they dipped significantly and I went up there and I needed to make a massive point and the point got made and they went from 50 calls a day to 200 calls a day in 24 hours. And the owner of car registration SV21 SVR please move your car from the curbside and park in the car park. Is it your first day at work ends in your new suit? Everyone looking at me, nice big smile for us. I wanted to bring him there because one day I want him to look back and say entrepreneurship was in my blood, was in my DNA. Firing early and being a great mentor and a great um, father figure and a great friend to my son is so important to me because I know what it's like growing up without um, a father figure that's the person that I described and I don't want that for my son. I want him to be proud of me and I want to be proud of him. What are you doing on the stage? Hey, come back here. Come back here. You can't catch me. You can't catch me. <laughs> Guys, I really hope you enjoyed Unfinished Business Best Bits segment. I really enjoyed watching that back. Hopefully you have as much fun as I did. And hopefully I've given you some more context to how my brain works, how my mind works, and what goes on, you know, really behind the scenes, behind the scenes, and you've enjoyed the show. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments, which was your favorite scene that you've seen today? Did you like this episode? What would you like to see more of in Unfinished Business? Because this is your show too. Let me know in the comments, make sure you like, subscribe, and most importantly, you always keep watching. Thank you.